Okay, here we are over at tank number two, and uh, look at these mollies. Clay was just saying she looks... She's enormous. That's her husband. She's ready to explode. There's babies in there, too. Up towards the top in the grass. Yeah, this is the tank the cat loves to watch. I don't know if I can see them. They're hidden and they're good. But... They're right there in the corner. I can see them from here. You gotta tip your phone back. I saw them and then they move on me. There he is. Hey. There are more in there, I'm sure. Yeah, there is. They're eating the algae. They've just seen a little guy flying, flying down there. <laughs> so what's going on with this tank? Well, I had a little bit of hair algae problem, so I'm cutting back on the feeding and letting the, the fish eat the hair algae. Mollies are good at it. Um, I want to get some Siamese algae eaters. That'll help keep it clean all the time. And we just added some more of that. What is that? Java? Java moss. And talk about that for a minute for new people that maybe they'll... Well, that thing looks like a snake there, that spiral. You get it at the pet shops, it comes in a spiral, and it looks dried out like that. So, you let it, you float it, and then it'll soak up all the water. There's a piece of wire in there so you can twist it and bend it to any shape you like. I just leave it a spiral so it gives the baby something to hide in. But that will, if Ruthie takes you over to the other tank, she can explain what it looks like when it's fully grown and you'll see a big difference in it. Well, let's go we there. just put those in yesterday. So. Well, well, let's go there now, okay? Okay, pause your thing. All right, if you, if you see this plant here, this is one of those spirals. See how, how much it's grown? It is enormous. That's what it looks like from far back. But you can't see the spirals. But it gives the babies a, a lot of grass to hide in. I've got so much grass in there now that I think what I'm going to do is there's a, a plastic log in here. I don't know if you can even see it. Probably saw it before. The fish like that log, but it's taking up a lot of space. And if, as you can see, there's a lot of fish in there. These are all the babies from. We bought six sword tails and we lost four of them. Now we're down to this big female, and there's a one other big female in there. She's right here. Yeah, she's she moves she's going over there too. She's back there. That big green and orange female. And all these babies are from those two. It, it looks like Christmas lights when you're here in the house. But there's a, there's a lot of babies in there. It, it looks like Christmas lights when you're in here looking at the tank because they're all shining it, it's it's really cool because all the fish that are in here there's so many with the green but i think i'm going to have to take the log out just so there's room you're going to take the log out i think so won't be today but because the quarry cats love that log so it gives them somewhere to hide in too but look at these and we've got one neon tetra in there too and right here see them yeah, because all the tetras and die. Well, when you buy them at the fish store, you told me... Well, you, you have no idea how old they are. So it, when you go to the pet shops, buy the, the smallest fish you can get. But I just love those Because tetras. you get... You don't know how old they are. And if they're a year or two old, you could probably take a bigger chance of losing them than you do the... Young fresh ones. Well, it's just like the girl said, people surrender their fish there. You have no idea how old they are. And then you pay for them, and then 
And that happens at most pet stores. People surrender their guinea pigs, they surrender their whatever, and then the pet store sells them, which is fine because you're taking care of them, but it's just when you don't know the age of some things. We've got just so many fish. Oh, I love this tank. This is like awesome tank. They are cleaning up the algae good, so. Which is why we never have to clean our tanks. May you add that story? Well, you can see them eating off the plants right now. You see them every now and then you'll see them going over and cleaning off the leaves of the plants. You don't want to starve your fish, but if you hold off for a day every now and then and let them, they just go to town cleaning what's all over the tank, and then you can go back to your regular routine. But if you're looking just to have a tank that you just don't have to do any work for, and it has a lot of fish, we've been very happy with the sword tail, sword tail fish one. Although they did love the guppies, meaning they ate most of our guppies. Well, they ate a lot of the babies, and they ate the, the big ones. And then this corn But you cat. can see there's still tiny little babies in here. I mean, they're, they're tiny, and they're smaller ones yet. And there's corn cat. And they love this um, java moss. And it you know the little babies in the java moss? And it looks super pretty because it, and you, when you just peek over, when you're cleaning, it, it looks like a little Christmas tree in there. Well, with all orange lights. Yeah, because you, know, <laughs> you look back here and you walk by and there's all those little orange lights in that. It, you know, it, it looks really nice. And the little brown fish end up turning out to be these, these green and orange when they get older. Yeah. So you'll see little brown babies in there. There's one in the back there swimming right here yes yeah, some of them because we couldn't tell at the and beginning the, i they, couldn't tell I could she tell. couldn't tell if they were sword tails or guppies and yeah they get they change colors as they get older some of these little tiny ones start out pink like that one there and that one there and they'll get bright orange like these bigger ones at the top and actually we got more babies from the sword tails than we did from the guppies yeah well it's because uh you got two two enormous females that yeah. are always pregnant once they get pregnant, you don't have to have the males anymore. They just keep right on populating. Once they get bred by the male, they they hold the semen and stuff inside them and keep fertilizing eggs. So one pregnant, if you get one pregnant female guppy or one female pregnant swordtail from the store, you'll have an abundance of fish. You don't have to have the males as long as you know they're pregnant. And the main way to tell they're pregnant, you really can't tell with this big orange one because her gravid spot is not dark. But this other female, if you look at her, she's over on this side here. She's, she has a big dark gravid spot. Yeah, see that dark spot? That's at, at her tail end. That lets you know they're pregnant. And they just They'll have 20 or 30 babies and then sometimes more. They're a little bit like chickens. They don't and have, then, they have a baby every day or, you know. I mean, well, a chicken will lay an egg whether you've got a rooster or not. No, but meaning that. But they have to be, you have to have a male to be fertile. No, but no. But with a, with a fish, once the male fertilizes the, the eggs in the female, she'll continue to have babies. It could be up to two years. Yeah. But by that time, you've got more males in here now. I don't know how many males we've got. Most of them are females from what I can see. Yeah. but the, Yeah, I haven't seen any males coming out of this bat shot. Well, they're still young. Yeah. Their, their sword on their tails won't come out for another couple of months. But we want to put a, some kind of a big tank or bucket on the porch so that we can watch them when we're sitting on the porch. And we'll take that down for the for the winter, but for the summer it'll give us. You know, we'll enjoy it. And if we get too many fish, we'll bring them to the pet store or something. If you look, you can see the fish eating the algae off in the. I don't know if you can see it from over there. Yeah, you got, you're, at the, 
You're at the wrong angle. I'll have you hold the camera. If you watch him, you can see him eating off the algae. Doesn't want to focus very well. Yeah, they, they'll, from what you've been telling me, they'll eat the algae, but they still need fish food. Well, you still need fish food, but if, if they're eating the algae, that's help keeping the tank clean. That's a good thing. But you can see some of the algae on the plants. Every now and then you'll see one go over and start eating it. But Which is what they're supposed to do. But that's how you keep a clean tank. Full of plants. Yeah, well, yeah. you've got to have the plants in there because it gives off the oxygen for the fish. And the fish give off the ammonia and stuff for the, the plants to survive. So it's, it's a small little ecosystem. And the fish poop turns into nitrates, and which helps uh, the plants. But they are going around and attacking the plants, the algae on the plants, which is good because that helps get rid of the. There's a lot of it on that. If you can see that brown stuff on those leaves, they'll have that cleaned off and in a day's time. You just you don't want to starve them, but like I said, you just let them go about their natural thing going around and picking off the algae but you see we have several different sizes fish in the same tank and they don't seem to bother either or each other a lot of little tiny babies in there right along with the big ones and if they're being fed good they the large ones don't even bother the the fry which are baby fish But the smaller fish do a better job of cleaning algae than the big ones because they're always looking for something extra to eat to help them grow. I love this tank. This is actually my favorite tank right now. Is this your favorite one? No, I, I like all of them. I tend to watch all the fish. Like we haven't had all. we haven't had any breeding of any quarry cats or anything, but that's fine. I try to keep a boat. There's a quarry cat right there at the bottom. These are the salt and pepper, or the, the peppered quarry cats. There were six in here that I know of. There was five of the whites over in the other tank. And we just bought two more of the, the little pandas, which get about half that size. And they're over in the baby tank keeping that clean. Call it the baby tank because it's always got babies in it, but I guess you can't call it the baby tank anymore because all three of the tanks got babies in them. Guess we have to call it the grow out tank or something or guppy tank. Well, we're kind of done. But you can see how the little tiny fish are swimming right around with the big ones and not, not afraid of getting eaten or anything. So, as long as you've got a lot of plant life in there and they're being well fed, you don't have to worry about your big, big fish eating the babies. We're kind of done raising babies, babies. Well, there's a lot of babies in here. Bro. Well, because they're now they're naturally just repopulating all yeah. the time. All right, so we've uh, bored you enough with our fish tanks. <laughs> and you see a big, big female's gravid spot, that big bored. black spot on the bottom. That's, for, she's right full of babies again. I live for my fish tanks. <laughs> all right, this is Clay and Ruth from Popo's Backyard farm saying join us again for another wonderful adventure with fish <laughs> okay bye bye